Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to be checking out the FL Sun V400. Okay, before we get started, I want to point out that I did not pay for the printer. FL Sun reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to test out the V400. So, one of the reasons why I was interested in testing the machine is for the Delta system that it has which is those kind of three-point control arms that would actually make it six arms. There's two on each side. And I haven't had or used one of these machines previously. So I was pretty interested in seeing the results and the way this machine would work, the outcome of the printers, and specifically how it works. Because again, this was the first time uh, of me interested in a Delta printer. One of the features that I was mostly interested in was the build size. And unlike most machines, which is kind of like a cube type of build volume, this is a cylindrical volume. And it's actually a 300 millimeter diameter and a 400 millimeter height. So it's pretty big of a build plate. It's also advertised with the capacity to print up to 400 millimeters per second, which is pretty fast. Also, the hot end can go up to 300 degrees Celsius. So on my end, I'm pretty interested in building uh, bigger things with filaments that I haven't used before due to the lack of the ability to print on that high of a temperature. The V400 comes with a clipper system, unlike the majority of the systems out there that work with Marlin. So you can also use the Wi-Fi uh, web interface, which is software that allows you to change settings while it's printing, or even send prints via Wi-Fi through your computer, or you can also install a web camera so you can monitor your prints while it's printing. It comes with dual fan for better cooling. Each one of the six little arms is made out of carbon fiber. It also has a auto leveling system. It also has some LEDs on the nozzle head so you can see the print when it's dark. And another thing that I thought was really cool was the ability to turn on and off the FL Sun logo. It also comes with a speeder pad which is a seven inch uh, control pad that can be adjusted. It has a long cable that can be placed in different spots. You can move it around. I've seen people uh, set up mounts all over the printer in different settings, so there's many ways to adjust that. So one of the things that it, right off the bat you can see is that the printer is really big. So when it arrived, it was a really big package, but everything seems to be packed pretty well. So one of the downsides of the printer is most likely the size because it's so high, setting it up in a normal desk would leave the top of the printer pretty high and you have to kind of be stretching out to reach uh, when you're changing the roll of filament. I don't think the printer was difficult to assemble, but I do think that because of the size, you definitely need a large area to start working while you set it up. One of the things that I didn't like while while I was setting up the printer was that the cables that connected the top the top of the printer which I believe the motherboard is located inside the top while the power source or power supply is located at the bottom you have to run the cables through one of the uh, arms and the cable is uh, pretty thick it's a big size cable with connectors so while putting it in you kind of have to push it and being a cable they're kind of soft so what I had to do was I had to take off a shoelace, putting, <laughs> putting one of the shoelaces on one side, let it run through the other side, tie it up to the cable, and then pull the shoelace so I can pull the cable through. So that was kind of easy to solve, but it's a problem that you should not have when you're setting up the printer. Or they can actually offer a solution maybe by adding some type of a small cable that you can use uh, instead of me taking off my shoelace. So once I had the printer assembled, it took me about 30 minutes, I was ready to start some prints. And unlike the majority of the printers that I use or I've tested, uh, instead of test starting the test with a personal design or something that I have done, I ended up printing the test prints that come with the printer. So they were all pretty, they all came out great. They had great results. Uh, the, I, the first one that I printed was the calibration cube. That took about 
seven minutes, I believe. Uh, I can't recall exactly, but it was super, super fast. And the results were pretty good. After that, I printed the bunny that it comes with it, and the overhang was pretty good. I didn't find any issues. The layering was, uh, I think, pretty good shape. And then after that, I printed the overhang test, which I thought had great results overall. So then after that, what I did was I grabbed one of my designs, I took it to Cura, and I scaled it up as much as I could, and then I started to print. I was pretty confident in the way the print was printing, so I left it and I actually took off for the day, and I was gone for about seven hours. And so when I came back, I came back to something terrible. Apparently the print had failed and it, it came off of the build plate. Uh, unfortunately, almost half of a roll when that was gone, and my mistake was leaving the printer in a section of my home uh, where there's no Wi-Fi and not setting up the webcam to keep an eye on the printer. So I was pretty confident of the printer that unfortunately I encountered an error. However, I decided to give it one more try. I set up the printer once again and the results were slightly better. However, one of the supports came off and it messed up the design. At that point, I kind of realized that there was a big difference on the test prints that came with the printer and the and the G codes that I was getting from my slicer. So I decided to make a few adjustments on the slicer and print out a couple of things, but this time I decided to print uh, smaller items. I printed a Benchy. The results were almost as good as the test prints that came with the printer, but there was a few slight issues that I thought I could fix by adjusting a few different things on the slicer. Unfortunately, the issues were changing uh, in a weird way. So there was some bumps on the, uh, on the prints, there was a lot of lines, uh, some stringing, and the results were just completely different from what I originally had printed with the test prints that came with the machine. So I decided to print uh, some of those again. So I printed uh, the Q one more time and the results were completely different again. So at that point it was obvious that the slicer, there were some issues with the slicer or with the G codes that I was getting from the slicer. So it could have been the USB, it could have been a couple different things, but instead of trying to figure it out on my own, what I did was I joined some uh, Facebook groups and I started asking around people that had the machine prior to me if they were having the same issues. And apparently the issue was the slicer that I was using, which was Cura. Uh, but it was a version that had just come out I actually started having issues with the same slicer in my other machines. So some of the people suggested that I change to the Orca slicer, which I did. I downloaded it, I installed it, I threw in a Benchy and I sliced it. The results were completely different. The Benchy came out great. The overhang changed completely from the one that I used from Cura. So at that point it was obvious that the slicer was causing the issues. I changed the filament to a different color and at this point what I wanted to test was the quality of the prints that were going to come out. I wanted to print difficult shapes that I don't normally print. So I decided to print a couple of vases and they all came out great. And one of the most complicated ones I would say uh, was one that has really thin pieces or parts on the print. The only minor issue that I found was some uh, very light stringing that can easily be removed, but other than that, the print came out great. I printed it out again to see if I was going to say if I was going to get the same quality, or if I was going to encounter an issue. I think that this model is very delicate and can easily uh, come up with issues, uh, be knocked off the build plate, or even break one of the the very small parts. But both results were great. I did a couple of honeycomb uh, vases that uh, pretty much the shapes themselves are kind of complicated, but you definitely need a good printer so you can get uh, a 
good finish on the overall print. I also thought this base was a great uh, pick to test the machine because it has a complicated uh, shape throughout the print but it's also a bit of a tall print so the results on this were going to tell me a little bit more on how the consistency was going to be with the printer and I think that the results were great. So on all the bases that I printed I think that the outcome is outstanding especially for the speeds that I was getting I was printing some of these in an hour, some of them in three hours. Uh, that usually path machines would take 12, 14 hours, 20 hours. I was almost running out of filament. And the filament that comes with the machine is only about 100, maybe 150 grams. I don't think it's 200, but I could be wrong. But it's very small or very little. So I basically only printed the test prints with it. And... Uh, I decided to print something a little bit more on my type of stuff that I print, which are miniature or figures from cartoons or movies or stuff like that. I found this really cute Pokemon, which is Mew, and he's sleeping. I think it's a great design. I printed it in pink PLA, and uh, the results were pretty good. After that, I still had a little bit more filament, and I found a Jigglypuff that I thought it was pretty cool. So I decided to print that and the results were also really good. I do say, I do think that the support could be adjusted a little bit in the settings that I was using. But as I was printing stuff, most as I was printing stuff that didn't really need its support, this was the first design that had that issue. Fortunately, not everything is perfect. As the world most almost out of filament. I decided to print the Mew one more time and probably give it out to a friend. But unfortunately this print did fail and it seems like one of the parts came off of the printer and actually had some layer shifting that caused some pretty bad issues. I will point out that at that point I was not using any type of uh, glue or adhesive system on the build plate. I was just using it as it was. Lastly, I wanted to test another type of filament, and this time was a gold silk filament. But instead of printing something a little bit bigger, I wanted to test it the same way that I tested these other filaments and the machine itself with a bit of a more complicated design. But instead of making it bigger, I made it smaller so I can see uh, the detail that I, would, that I can get from a machine like this and the results were just great. However, I think that probably changing some of the settings like layer height for something like this is, uh, would most likely give you a better outcome. So at this point, I have an order of about 35 rolls of filament that I am expecting and I'm ready to start putting to use with the machine as it prints really fast. I have a lot of things that I've been wanting to print in bigger size and I think this is the perfect time. So for me personally, I will be using the machine to print uh, big products like helmets, uh, probably some cosplay stuff that people have asked me for. So my personal perspective, uh, what, what I would do with a printer like this, if I had a physical shop, I don't have a physical shop, I normally just make designs and I do sell a couple of prints and ship them out, but I work from home. So nobody really gets to see my shop. If I had a physical shop, I would probably put the machine right in the center of the shop. That way when people would come in, they would see something printing at high speeds. And not only that, the printer itself has a lot of view. It, it, uh, you can walk around it and still see the printer going. Uh, unlike other machines that are pretty fast right now, but they're sealed. So that could be also a downside because if you want to print ABS, you want an enclosure. Obviously there's enclosures for the machine, but if you wanted to use the machine to kind of get attention from people, I think this is really good for that. And although that has nothing to do with the quality of the prints that the machine would give out, I still think that would be a, another use that you could do with the machine itself. So if you have a couple of box machines where uh, some of them print really fast and really good, you, it doesn't really uh, 
work aesthetically for a shop per se. They look good if they're uh, printing forms so they're all stacked up, but it but when you have a physical shop and you want people to find your shop interesting and looks and that looks cool, just walking around a machine like this could be very entertaining for them. So I think it's a great printer. It has some of the features that I wanted, which is a big build volume and speed. Okay, so some of the things that I also like about the printer is I think it's pretty quiet. It's pretty stable as it's a bit high. I also like the magnetic build plate that allows you to remove the prints easier. Uh, the pad that can be adjusted for however you end up setting up the printer, if you set it up in a low area or in a higher table, you can put the pad in an area where you can have more control over it. So the thing that I didn't like is, uh, well, it pretty much goes in contradiction with one of the areas that I like, which is the build volume, but because of the build volume, the printer is bigger, so it's pretty big. and. You definitely need a specific area to set this up. I had to set it up in the shed because one, I don't want to have printers in my studio. So I don't want to hear the noises, I don't want to feel the heat, so it had to go to the shed. And when I placed it in the shed, the only area that I had was on a table that ended up pretty high. Another thing that I kind of really didn't like was the way of the auto leveling system and how it works. So you have to install a sensor to it every time you do the leveling. So it needs some minor adjustments from your end. Okay, so that is my experience with the FL Sun V400. So that's it for this video. I hope I can give you a little bit of insight of my perspective on the FL Sun V400 and the way it works. I'll see you guys next time.